Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, where you can ask me any question and we answer it in a video like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. If you want to join the Team Keep It Clean patrons, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids, and if you don't want to, that's fine as well. I love y'all. As always, you know the drill. Let's do it. First question came from my boy Phil. He said, I know all of us fans and players on the Ravens roster respect or love John Harbaugh for what he's done for our franchise since 2008. But from the playbook and unknown perfect play calling Eric Bieniemy does, I would not mind seeing him getting interviewed during the offseason to perhaps replace Harbaugh and Roman as head coach and offensive coordinator because I believe it is time to move on and upgrade and improve our offense. I, I, I do believe that as well, that the offense, it, it has to be better. The yards, again, the pretty yards, the top, what are they, six in yards or something like that, I think. That's great, but it's about points too. Points definitely matter. I think that's the most important thing. That's why on the flip side with Wink, um, he, he had, like this year, had I think the worst pass defense in the league. Uh, but as far as points, Ravens, a lot of times they did all right. So it's just one of those weird things how it depends on what numbers you look at. But the end all be all for me is points scoring offense. But let's continue. Um, he said, as long as Harbaugh is a head coach, he will stick with former colleague uh, coaches from the past that have worked with his brother and him before. The only way the leaves KC is for a head coaching opportunity. So, Engraven, do you think we should go after him before another franchise makes this move? It's been 10 seasons since making it to the AFC Championship. How many more times are we going to keep giving Harbaugh a pass? Whew. Um... I would love if Eric being me got a shot, even a shot with the Ravens. And and like you said, he he would not, and because it would it would be like it would be dumb of him to do that. He would not make a move uh, from offensive coordinator with the Chiefs <laughs> to the offensive coordinator with somebody else. It just it would not be wise. Even if he got a pay grade, I mean a pay raise or what. No, his next move needs to be head coach. Um, but Ravens they're not moving off of John Harbaugh right now. So Eric B enemy, um, I would love it. Uh, I would feel like he, um, like it would be like a bonus, man, because he's a obviously offensive minded guy, um, and he does call plays for for KC. I mean, we saw him uh, just the other day in the game against the Steelers. Oh man, I was so glad that they beat the Steelers too. Um, but we saw him with the play sheet, and we saw him with the, his hand over his mouth calling plays and stuff. But he, um, just watching that offense, and it's just. I love how they make the simplest things just look so pretty, but they don't go too crazy with it, but it's just simple stuff. The misdirection, just getting different guys involved, using guys to their strengths. And, and if you take away one guy, they got like 50 others that could do something too, and they will make sure those guys get involved. They will find a way to give those guys opportunities. Um, I, I love it. I, I love the way that their offense runs. It, it is just, it's amazing. Um, you got somebody who's great at quarterback, obviously, with Patrick Mahomes. You got a great tight end. You got this speedster wide receiver. You got some more possession-type wide receivers. I mean, you sound like the Ravens to me. But it's um, it's just, it's, it's, it's beautiful to watch, man. It's beautiful to watch. And, and the way that they design stuff, the way that they scheme it up, the way that they... They, they, they set you up. It's, it's like they, in the first couple of drives, they look at what you're doing on offense. The first couple of drives, they'll be like, oh, we ain't going to do nothing too much. Let, let, let's see what they're looking like. Let's see what that this defense is looking like. Let's see what they go for. Let's see what they do in these different situations. And then after the first couple of drives, that's when I'm like, all right, we got you. We know who you are now. They clearly do their homework. They clearly do their research on you. They clearly study plenty of film. Um, and they... The situational football, too. Oh, boy. The situational play calling is just, oh, it's, 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 it's beautiful, man. It's beautiful. It um and, and, and their situational play calling, it works out more than it doesn't. I, I feel like a lot of times with the Ravens, it's reversed. Um, but, you know, they, they're not moving off of John Harbaugh. Harbaugh ain't going anywhere. Um, so this 
Eric B. Enemy would be a, uh, <laughs> it's just a dream. It's a dream. Um, Raven's not going to go after him. They, uh, they don't have a vacancy to where he would occupy that vacancy right now. Excuse me. Um, but he, if, if he wants, he'll have another opportunity somewhere. But the thing with Eric B. Enemy is that, in my opinion, um, don't just take a job just to take a job. Because every franchise is not a, a, a franchise that's run in a good way. So just because there's availability does not mean that it's a real opportunity. Yeah, he would technically be a head coach somewhere. But you're going to go to the Texans and all the just wild stuff that they got going on over there. But you're going to go to the uh, who else? Some some places that could be available. Cardinals may be available. We'll see what happens with them. Um, Shanahan ain't going nowhere for 49ers. That that would be a uh, an interesting opportunity. Yeah, that could be a good opportunity. They got some playmakers over there. Oh yeah, yeah. He could he could do some work over there. Um, but anyway, I can't even think of oh Dolphins. Uh, yeah, you know, I don't know. It, it would depend on how he felt about Tua. But my point is that you you just can't take. The first opportunity, I mean, we saw it last year. Well, we don't know if he got offered any of the jobs from last year, but who was it? The Jets, they hired Robert Salah, and um, what was the other opportunities? I forget. But anyway, every opportunity is not a good opportunity. So him staying, continuing to stay with the Chiefs, if there are no good opportunities that present themselves, you're like, hey, okay. And Raiders, um, ah. Uh, Raiders is an interesting one. Mm, that ah, that's an interesting one. But, mm. but then you had to go against your former employee two times. A, I mean, your former employer two times a year. That would be interesting. But I don't know, man. I just he he'll have his shot for sure. But again, don't just jump to the first opportunity because that just because it's an opportunity doesn't mean it's a good one. Um, but then anyway, being enemy to the Ravens, long story short, is it's not gonna happen uh, unless. Uh, but yeah, it's not gonna happen because it would it would ha it would take a lot. We would ha the earliest that it would possibly happen would be next off season if it was to happen at all. But that would mean he would have had to stay with the Chiefs again, and, and if he got any interviews this off season, um, and he obviously didn't either they didn't get the job or didn't accept the job. He would have to stay with the Chiefs another season. Ravens would obviously keep everybody intact like they probably will. Um, and then some crazy thing would have to happen to where they just didn't re-sign John Harbaugh and then they decided to hire Eric Bieniemy. That would be the only way that it happened. That would be it. Um, so we'll see. It's not impossible, but it's just really not likely. Next question came from my guy Marco, and appreciate you being a patron, a new patron, by the way. He said, what's good and graven? Hope you're doing well, and I'm glad I found your channel. As a Ravens fan from Cali, mm, I've been doing mock draft simulations since the season ended. Oh, he's been ready to do this one. Uh, we got 10 draft picks for now. Who knows? Because you know Ravens, they love them draft picks. They may end up with like 15 by the end of the draft. Or they could trade some, package some, and move up, move around the draft. We'll, we'll see. Anyway, I think we need to draft two cornerbacks. All right. Uh, yeah, I could see that because uh, we're going to lose Anthony Averitt, Jimmy Smith. He'll be gone as well. So, boom. Well, we need to replace those guys. Two defensive tackles. Brandon Williams probably gone. Calais Campbell, he could end up retiring. So, Justin Ellis, Jelly, he's a free agent as well. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I see that. Two pass rushers. Um, Tyus Bowser, he could be back. He could be out. We don't know. Um, but how will he be back when he's back? We won't know. Uh, Justin Houston, he could be gone as well. So we'll see. So, yeah, there you go. Um, two offensive linemen, one being a tackle. Okay. Um, Ronnie Stanley, how will he be back when he returns? Patrick McCarry, he doesn't need to be your starter. Um, you can invest in a starting right tackle, and Patrick McCarry can be your backup guy, your swing man. Um, so, yeah, but he did say one tackle and uh, one being a tackle. Um, Bradley Bozeman, don't know what's going to happen with him. Um, ben Cleveland, I think he's your starter, but you can never have enough depth, enough enough quality depth, as we saw this year. Ooh, yikes. Uh, one safety. Well, you're losing Deshaun Elliott, so boom, there you go. Um, and one 
linebacker. You could be losing Josh Bynes, even though we know that you're going to keep him on speed dial. So there's that. So, yeah, you uh, <laughs> you got it. Oh, man, I should have I should have read this. Oh, well, never mind. I, I thought he was saying the same thing. I, well, he wasn't. He said, um, in terms of free agency, I think Bozeman, Bynes, Calais, and Ellis are priorities. Well, he even mentioned Justin Ellis. Nobody mentions Jelly. I never hear anybody mention Jelly. So look at you. That's like, okay, okay. Assuming we also free up some cap space. Let me know your opinion on that. Uh, which direction you think we'll go in the draft and free agency. Stay safe and trust the process. Ooh, and it is certainly a process. And it's a fun one that we love talking about. Um, that's why we do every single day. Uh, but yeah, as far as the draft, yeah, I think um, you nailed it. I could see a, a running back in there too somewhere, um, depending on what they do with the guys that they got. Uh Bozeman, I think he is one of Ravens' priorities, but it, depending on what the Ravens offer him, depending on what the market's looking like, it would be wise for him to go see what's out there. Uh, Bynes, um, he said he wants to come back. Ravens, uh, I don't, I don't want to say they can't keep relying on him, but you want them to sort of, uh, and maybe if, if they see a linebacker or a couple of linebackers in this year's draft that they really like and they feel like could do it, Okay, cool, but if you don't, Bynes, all right, cool. But just know Bynes, very smart player, very instinctive player, very smart player. But his um, <clears throat> the, the lack of athletic ability, it can show. And that's not a distance. He's just older. He's an older player. So he'll know. It, it, it reminds me sort of like Eric Weddle um, because he, smart player, can get other players lined up, da 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 Knows where the play is going, knows where it's going to, but can't always get there. So that's just something that the Ravens are going to have to think about when it comes to Josh Bynes. Calais Campbell, is he all the way in it? Is he going to be like, you, you got to find out from Calais Campbell. You can't rush him, obviously, but you got to find out from, hey, are you in or no? Like, you are you fully committed or are you going to be like halfway? Because if he's halfway, you're going to be able to tell. You'll be able to tell on the field. And then, then we'll get one of these uh, notifications. Oh, you know, at, at, at week three, uh, Calais Campbell, he decided to retire. So you got to find out if, if he really is all in. So it's just one of those things. Um, we'll see. This, this offseason is, uh, I mean, every offseason is really fun. I mean, you wish the offseason wouldn't have started yet. We wish we wouldn't be having these conversations yet. But it, it is what it is. It's all good. So uh, this, this offseason won't be any different. Next question came from my guy Greg and Bmo. He says, "Season over, had amazing moments. Somehow getting an eight and three with all the injuries, but once December started, everything caught up. And one thing I will say is, if Ravens, let's say, were five percent more healthy, including Lamar Jackson never getting hurt, I don't think they lose six straight. Yeah, there's absolutely no way. There's no way." Oh way, no way. Anyway, um. Even, even with all those injuries, when a lot of your starters are practice squad players and somehow, except for Cincinnati, uh, you are in five of those six games, had a chance of winning in the end and fail. Well, that's on some of the play calling and coaches, too. And things uh, and hopefully we'll get better next season. Moving on. Who would you prefer to win it all in the playoffs? Um, either Rams, Rams or Packers. Uh, but I am just I am glad. That, well, Rams and Packers and not not Tom Brady. And not the Chiefs either. Even though Chiefs, I would have minded them less than Steelers. But so yeah. But I would rather rather them not. So either Rams or Packers, no Bucks and no Chiefs. So I just you know you get tired of that same old thing. But anyway, you said probably the Bills for me. Okay, Bills. Yeah, that that'd be another time. Well, I wouldn't I wouldn't be mad. And I mean, I can't be too mad at anybody who wins in the playoffs because um, they're there and Ravens are not. I've seen this. It's always the funniest thing when I see it, man. Uh, I saw a couple of comments like that in the uh, the video that we did about who what team are Ravens fans rooting for now since the Ravens obviously aren't in there. And there were some people say, oh, I'm a Ravens fan. I'm not rooting for anybody. I ain't rooting for nobody. It's Ravens or nothing. All right, cool. That's, that's fine, big dog. That's, do your thing. And then I saw some people say, if Ravens aren't in it, I'm not even watching. I'm not watching football anymore. I'm not. I'm not watching, buddy. And I'm like, what? 
You so you really mean to tell me since Ravens ain't playing, your your TV doesn't even touch a football game anymore? I ain't really believe it. But even if there is that is the case, you are missing out on some fun football. Well, them, a lot of them seven seeds was a big yikes this past weekend. But we saw the, the Dallas and, and, and 49ers game. Uh, and I mean, that still is in Chiefs game. It, 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 it was fun. I, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed seeing that happen because I, I really thought that the Steelers may have thought they might be up to something. Um, what was another game that came down to it? Oh, the, the Raiders and the Bengals game. That game was really good, too. Um, but it's like you you would be missing out if you if you just, all right, Ravens are nothing. I'm only watching Ravens. I'm not watching any other teams. It's Ravens. Okay, well, <laughs> you ain't going to watch football for, what, the next eight months after Ravens got eliminated? <laughs> nah, not me. Anyway, he said, lastly, if you had to choose, what was your number one favorite moment or play of this Ravens season? Um, favorite moment was beating the Chiefs in week two. Um, that, that was my favorite moment probably from this season. And also the, um, because it just looked like, oh, the way that that game started, it was like, oh, boy. Oh, come on. Really? Can, is this? Oh, please. Not, not again. Because the way that it started with Lamar threw to, uh, he was throwing to Sammy Watkins, Sammy Watkins slipped. Uh oh, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> Pick six, honey badger. And then next drive, Lamar he threw. He threw uh, it's like you saw what he saw, but it's just like, whoa, hold up, man. What are we doing? He threw in like triple coverage. Honey badger picked it off again. And it was like, oh boy, is this, is this about to be one of these games, man? Like, come on now. Let's at least have a shot. But then they made so much stuff happen, and they won, and I, I loved it. Loved it. Um, and another one of my favorite moments, too, was the Colts game. Um, because the way that they just came back, man. The way that they came back, and Lamar was wheeling and dealing, and Lamar was making those quick decisions that a lot of people say he can't do. Um, and we saw when he was making them quick decisions and it was that up-tempo offense, that's usually when he makes the quick decisions. Because I know a lot of people say, oh, yeah, he does hold on to the ball too long. Yeah, but that he usually does that when the offense is, like, moving slow. But when it's up-tempo, that's when he's up-tempo, too, and he makes those quick, accurate decisions, like, boom, okay, boom, okay, check down, okay, boom, boom, boom. And that, so it would be those two games. Favorite moment, beating the Chiefs. Favorite game, uh, the Colts game. Um. Oh, he said for me, I go back and forth with away force and a fumble versus KC and Justin Tucker's sixty-six yard field goal in Detroit. That was a really good one too. That that was up there too. No man, we were just we were just going through craziness literally every single week in the beginning, and winning most of them too. Uh, but it, it was like crazy, like all the time in the beginning of the year, crazy. But we loved it, and we expected it. Um, that's why when games like the Bengals happen, it was like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa there, buddy. <laughs> Slow down now. Um, but it is what it is. But yeah, that Justin Tucker field goal, that, that was crazy too. Cause I, I thought he missed the way that the camera angle was. I, I thought he missed. Um, but he said, I would probably say the field goal since it ended the game, uh, from number one in the AFC to start December to last in the AFC North to finish the season. It was crazy. Hoping these injuries cool down next season. Have a wonderful day, and thanks for providing Ravens coverage all year round. Looking forward to the draft. Appreciate you, Greg. That was a really fun question about the favorite moments of the season and stuff like that. Because hey, y'all know I don't like top five stuff, but that was cool. Anyway, the next question came from the Savage Trio. He said, a very simple question for you. I want to know what you think of Tyler Huntley's status on the team right now. I think he'll be here next year. Cheap backup, reliable backup. Know that he can come in and play. Um, you, you want a few more plays from him, but you, you know what you're getting out of him. And, and he can only go up from here. But anyway, he said, uh, I know he didn't end the last game well, but he still has proven a lot this season. So do you think we will keep him next year? For sure. Uh, if yes, then how long? At least next year. And then you hope that uh, in preseason that he gets some time to shine. And, and you hope that in some fourth quarters that he gets some time. We want to go back to that. Can we get back to that? We said Lamar in the fourth quarter because the game is just out of reach. But no, nah, these, these Ravens, they went back to the old Ravens, the, the, the heart attack Ravens. So I don't know, man. But 
Um, yeah, so you hope in preseason that he shows some stuff again, and it's like, oh, that that, that guy Huntley, he's nice. And then the following year, somebody go ahead and put in put puts in an offer. But as far as next year, yeah, he'll be with the Ravens. Uh, he said, I don't see him as a long stay on this team because he has a lot of talent. But that's me. What do you think? No, and, and you don't want him to stay on the team for long. Like who who wants to only be who wants to be a career backup? Nobody wants that. So you you want like the best opportunity that he could possibly get with somebody else in the future. Uh, you want him to go try to get that. So, um, cause obviously this is Lamar's team. He's a starter. Uh, and, but I don't think they can trade him next year. I don't believe they can. I still got to double check on that. I've been meaning to, but I haven't yet. Um, but yeah, he, he's, he's here for now. Next question came from my guy, Les. He said, hey, engraving team, keep it clean. Hope all is well. With the season wrapped up for the Ravens, my questions are as follows. Number one, what are the targets for the Ravens next season? Uh, in my opinion, they haven't came, come out and said anything as of this recording. It is January 18th. It's Tuesday, um, and it's 10.51 a.m. Um, but I would say their targets would be, in my opinion, to stay healthy. Um, and I saw somebody in the comment section. They said, stay healthy so you ain't got to get healthy. I said, oh, I love that one. Um, but, yeah, to stay healthy. Uh, and I would hope that it would be to build the offensive line um, and just really – do better at finishing drives on offense and defense too, but certainly on offense. Um, number two, he said, do you think the Ravens will reach the said targets based on what you've seen this season? <laughs> Not considering the injuries, but on coaching and play calling designs. Um, it's it's kind of sad that uh, I know a lot of people have been bringing it up and they're like, hey, yeah, if you look at this article from way back when Greg Roman was the offensive coordinator of the Bills, and this article from when Greg Roman was the offensive coordinator of the 49ers, and you plug and play the Ravens instead of where it says Bills or 49ers, then it's going to be the exact same thing. And it's kind of sad that it was the exact same thing about plays getting to the line. I mean, plays getting to the offense so late. Um, delayed games, uh, just not being able to finish drives, the offense getting stale, and it's just like, ooh. So can they reach the set targets? If something changes, maybe. Um, if they, like, they divvy up some of Greg Roman's responsibility with somebody else possibly, but I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Um, and it's not all on Greg Roman. It was on players too, for sure. Uh, it's not all on him. Um, so it it would take a lot. Uh, anything's possible till it ain't possible no more. Based off of uh, history, no, but it's possible. So history is meant to be, records meant to be broken, right? I guess. But anyway, he said, number three, what will the fallout be if they do not reach the said target? Has the current coaching set up plateaued and taking them as far as they can? That is such a great question, man. That is such a great question. Oh, wow. I, I think that's why they, I don't think they, like, they, I talked to some people and they said, that, like, it, it was in a space the other day. And it was a lot of people saying, oh, they expect John Harbaugh to get extended this offseason, like, this offseason, like, right now. Not next offseason, this offseason, 2022. And I'm thinking, huh? I, I, I just can't see that happening. How, how could, because he's on the last year of his deal, and you no know, Ravens, they don't like their head coaches just sitting there as in one year deals. I just, I can't see that. I can't see that. I can't see after Ravens, they started 8-3. and three. After Ravens, they end up losing six games in a row. Yeah, we know Lamar wasn't out there. But, he, but six games in a row, you couldn't win one. You couldn't win two. You couldn't win three. Couldn't win six. That would have been great. But I just, I can't see the Ravens being like, all right, Hobbs. Yeah, er everybody was hurt. A lot of people were hurt. Um, we lost six straight. We started eight. We were number one in the AFC, not the AFC. No, number one in the AFC. It's like, all right, we number one in the AFC, and we we lost six games straight. You know what? Let's sign you to a contract extension. No, you want that heat on the coach. You want his back against the wall, and you want him to really show you, like, all right, hey, what you about to do now when the pressure's on? You got one year left on your deal. One year left. Lamar got one year left on his deal. Pressure's on everybody. It's on everybody. So I just, when, when they said, when people would say, oh yeah, they expect him to get signed to a contract extension, I, I just don't see that. If it happens, I will be shocked, shocked. 
shocked like crazy. Shocked. But we'll see. But um, has the current coaching staff plateaued? I would hope not. But sometimes when you think about it, it's, it seems like they may have. It, it seems like it. And I know people are like, oh, no, but this year, give them injury pass. Okay, what about last year? What about last year? What about the year before that? When they had, and even with this 14 and 2 team, even if you like, all right, cool, you uh, even if you don't win the Super Bowl, you ain't win that one playoff game for that 14 and 2, that team, what about that year? Like, what? what anyway, um, he said, I want to hold this team to high standards, and if they are not achieving things that they have, that they have the talent to achieve, then people need to be held accountable, and something has to change. Stay positive, and healthy, much peace, and love. Appreciate you. This, this was fun. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, gotta made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right engraving, right engraving.